Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, YouTube. What's going on? It's your boy Joey Does Tech, and welcome yourselves back to a brand new video. Recognize this bad boy? Sony PlayStation 3 for my friend's boss. This is the one that decided to work after I fixed it and then went kaput. And I was very fortunate that I tested the device before giving it back to my friend, because that would have been very embarrassing. However, today we come back stronger. The terminologies that I'm gonna to use today are gonna to be incorrect. So apologies if I tilt anyone who's far more experienced than me in the field. Today I'm gonna to be removing the NEC slash token capacitors on the PlayStation 3 original. I've done a little bit of research. I've bought the capacitors in replacement that I'll show you in a second. And hopefully we're gonna get a little bit further than before. Are my hopes this high at the moment? Probably not. I'd, I'd bring them down a tad and say that they're about here. Nonetheless, we're going to give it our best shot to see if we can revive this PlayStation 3. If you guys haven't seen the previous video that relates to this one you're watching now, I'll leave a link to the other one in the description down below. If I can get this working, I will be one happy chappy because I thought it was completely gone. But I'm not going to get my hopes up because it might just not work still. Wish me luck and let's go. I'll try and talk you through these little things. Bonsoir. So this is the lovely PlayStation 3. The specific model is CECHM03, which is what we have down here. So first off, I'm gonna take it apart. So here we have the NEC token capacitors that I completely screwed up last time. I also have on the back, there are some more. This one's bubbled. I don't really want people taking advice from this specific video because I'm not an expert and I will probably break your PlayStation. I have 20 of the replacement capacitors here. And from my understanding, on each for each one NEC token cap, you put four of these. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we've got eight here, eight here. So 16 in total. However, this one I think looks fine. It doesn't look too bad. It's not lifted at all. I'm definitely gonna replace this one and this one. And then on the back, I'm then also going to replace this one that's really, really bubbly. So in total, I should only have to use 12 because I'm gonna replace three. However, if we then test and it doesn't work, I will continue to replace the ones that look dodgier is the word that I'm gonna use. I've seen a mixture of videos on YouTube where some people just pry them off, other people apply heat and then melt them off essentially. What I'm gonna do is gently lift up on these two to see if they're loose. Because if they come up, I'll see what I can get off first and then I'll just go ahead and put some heat around the board, heat the area up and then we can get rid of the remains. But I don't know if I'm gonna be able to maybe pop these off. It's worth a try, right? But, oh, there's some lift, we have some leverage. Oh wow, we actually do have some leverage. That's pretty good. Can I get right in there then? Oh okay, so that's like the top of the, it's like the top coating, I'm gonna assume. Oh okay, wicked. So that's that's that off. Look how bubbled this was <laughs> when I applied heat to it before. So I'm assuming that's just like plastic, right? Can I remove this one as well? It's gone from, going from this side now. Yeah, there we go, all right. Sweet. So these are the two that I actually want to, so I, I'm not done there by the way, that's not it. Like I still have so much stuff to get rid of. So all of this here needs to come off and I believe this is plastic, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to scrape this off now. I think I'm gonna to have to use the hot air. I think that's the easiest approach to getting these off, which we're gonna do now. So I'm gonna set my hot air station to maximum, which I believe is 480 degrees Celsius with a airflow speed of max, which is gonna be, uh, let's go with a six, only because I've got some components around here. I'm gonna go with a six out of eight. And uh, yeah, we're gonna give it a go. I will apply some flux in a second, but not straight away, I just wanna heat up the board. I'm just gonna go ahead and start to put some heat on the board. 
PS3, from my understanding, takes a very, very long time to get hot. Okay, they look a little bit clearer than what they were, hey. I'm just gonna change the tip on my soldering iron. I'm just taking my soldering iron now to clean up these bits and get any little remains off of them. I'm just putting some more flux on. Even though it looks like that's soldered out, it's not. A lot of that old stuff is still there. Residue, parts, plastic. I'm gonna get some IPA and have a quick clean up. All right, I'm just gonna prep the board now. I think I've cleaned it as much as I can. I think I've done a good enough job. I'm just gonna tin it up real quick um, and just get some extra solder on the pads. Now, these are the capacitors that we have for replacement. I believe they are 477 microfarad capacitors, but again, I'm just trying to get into focus, but that could be wrong information, so please take this with a pinch of salt. I believe the uh, brown side is positive. I'm just gonna be following like a, uh, a guide on the internet for what goes where. Um, I'll put that guide in the description if you guys wanna try this as well. This part of the video, as you can expect, was extremely fiddly. These capacitors were actually a little bit bigger than what I thought as well. So you have to angle them at like, a, I don't even know what angle that is. I'm gonna say like 65 degree angle, but that's gonna be completely and utterly wrong anyway. So as you can see with the brown stripes, that had to go on the top row. And then I believe the bottom row is like ground. I had to use some solder braid to soak up some excess solder that I had on the board. And as you can see, that didn't go too well and I had to get the solder sucker out. Alas, we eventually got things moving and the more I'd done, the easier it got. And let's just say that I hope they're all on successfully. Well, it certainly doesn't have to be a pretty job, but I think I've done as best I can. These are actually quite big compared to the uh, two lines that you have at the side, so it's very, very difficult to line them up. And like I said, the only one that I might do now is directly <laughs> on the back of it. So hopefully none of that stuff falls off when I'm doing this back one here that's bubbled, but I'm just gonna replace this one as well. Don't worry, I won't put you through the pain of another one. I haven't done a very good job, and I know I haven't. However, I don't... <laughs> Do I think this is gonna work? Probably not, but I've had good fun and it's been good practice. This cap here doesn't look in great shape and uh, these ones aren't bubbling, but they're a little bit discolored on the top. I'm gonna put her back together and I'm gonna see what happens. So before, don't forget, whenever I was to press the PlayStation button, it would go from the red, then to an orange, then it'll go beep, 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 and then it'll turn off. It was beeping, giving some like red lights, and it just doesn't work. After the red lights, it just stops and turns off again. So if that doesn't happen, and we get further than that, it's a win. If not, it's fine. We got some good practice today. Wish me luck. I'm just gonna put some IPA on and clean up around everywhere. What we're hoping for is a solid, it's just for the, the PlayStation to bloom and stay on. Hopefully it doesn't start smoking or something, so I'll have to keep my hand on the uh, on the power just in case. We're gonna be paying attention to this red light right here. Here we go. Moment of truth. Three, two, one. <laughs> Straight off to red. I'll we'll press it so you see red. Turns green. And then goes straight back to red. I mean, it might even be like a like an orangey light for you guys, but unfortunately, that didn't resolve it, which kind of sucks. That's unfortunate. 
Believe it or not, this is actually day two of this little mini project that I've got. I've still got eight capacitors left, which means I can still replace two of the NEC slash token capacitors of my choice. And I think I'm going to go for the ones that are directly underneath the CPU, I believe. Attempt number two, let's do this. Come on. So the ones I'm going to change, so I changed these yesterday and I also changed this one because it was really bubbling. The ones I'm going to change today because all of the others actually look suffice they do have a bit of a shine to them but that's fine the ones that i'm going to change are i believe below this chip here these two these are the ones that i'm going to do today i've got eight left so hopefully here's to hoping that when i change these ones out we'll be good to go if not it's been a fantastic learning experience and really good practice let's do this all right so that's them pretty much clean there's so much debris that comes off of these things it's actually quite tough have the other ones that we've done. I need to actually give this a good clean with IPA first, but yeah, this one, uh, I feel like these ones probably aren't as good as the other ones. Uh, actually, they might be a little bit better. I felt myself getting a little bit quicker towards the end especially. Here's the back as well. So I'd still have three old NEC token capacitors. So you got one there, two there, um, but I've replaced quite a few. So hopefully this works. Let's put it back together and let's give it a good old test. I'm just really quickly going to remove this thermal paste and put some more thermal paste on because this doesn't look like it's doing a great job. I am putting this all the way back together because regardless of what happens, this is the last time that I'm going to be working on this PlayStation 3. So we could be saying RIP or we could be saying hallelujah. Okay, Mr. PS3, I know we've had our differences. However, if you want to turn on now, I'm okay with that. I'm fine with that. We can just forget everything that's happened and what you've done to me and we can move on. If you don't want to work equally, I'm proud of you. Here we go. Three, two, one. It's been a pleasure, my old friend. I gave that my all. My first mistake in this whole situation was not buying enough replacement capacitors to replace all of the NEC token chips. And the question is now, who knows if it's gonna make a difference or not? I would say it's probably a 50-50 chance between me not actually doing the job correctly. So I feel like maybe with the capacitors, I could have been a little bit more accurate when placing them onto the rails. And I might have also actually left some debris, some like plastic debris on the rails anyway. I might not have cleaned them out properly. That's how it came across anyway. That's how it kind of felt. On the top rail, there was like a, a white bar that kind of stayed on there. So I had to solder over that white bar to try and eliminate it. It was, it was very weird. Nonetheless, good soldering practice, a good heat gun practice. I also used my little solder sucker as well at some points. I just thought that with these replacement caps, I wouldn't have to take an L, but we take an L, we eat the L, and we spit out a W at some other stage. That's what happens. So we take a loss and we spit out a win. That is gonna be the end of the journey for this PlayStation 3, unfortunately. I have enjoyed it. However, I do have, and I can't believe I'm doing this, but I have another PlayStation 3 Slim model that actually has the exact same issue. And I have around about 40 of the, that's quite a cool effect actually. This time I actually have 40 replacement caps, so I'm not gonna run out. As always, I'm sorry to you guys that I wasn't able to fix it today, but I am proud of myself for the attempts that we gave it and the experience that we've got trying to do it. I'm sorry to my friend and his boss as well because I just wanted this to be like a redemption shot, you know. I can't put myself down too much because it might have actually been a failure within the chips, one of the big chips itself, the GPU or the CPU. It could have been one of those. I hope you enjoyed this one, guys, regardless of the outcome. And if you did enjoy it, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and make sure you ding dong that bell next to the subscribe button to receive all of those juicy new video notifications. Make sure you have a fantastic weekend as well, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.